Good afternoon, everyone. This is Eileen from Long Beach Public Library. We have a very, very special presentation today of the theaters of Long Beach. Now, those of you who are from Long Beach uh, probably remember some of the theaters. And um, to our surprise, and my own too, I have found that there were more theaters than I ever imagined. Um, the, the ones that everybody knows is probably the ones that I know but I found out there are a lot more. So this is gonna be a very surprising presentation. Okay, we're gonna start on the first slide. Way back in the 1920s, there was a corporation called the Long Beach West Amusement Corporation. Um, they filed in 1920. And basically this corporation was looking to form a theater down in the west end of Long Beach. So let's go to the next slide. At that time, Camp Upton put out an advertisement for a public auction sale of buildings, utilities, improvements, I mean, even lumber. They were taking down the camp from World War I and it was up for sale. Now, Chuck Jacoby had uh, talked about this on his I Love New York um, site. And intuitively, this is like an amazing um, share from him because it does turn out that that is the, the oral history of the West Theater, that it was from the barracks of Camp Upton, which is in Long Island. That is the site presently, as we know, is the Brookhaven National Labs. It was the site for World War I between 1917 and 1920. And then um, they had soldier training there and everything all the way through to World War II. But the barracks that was purchased by the West End Corp would have been similar to these barracks in this particular um, photo is not the one that the West End Theater was, but it's the theater that was on campus for the service for the army. And this is from the his Library of Congress. Now in January of 2000 and 1921, I'm sorry, I'm back, got to go back 100 years. Um, the new amusements at Long Beach West. Well, the West End Amusements Corporation did finally establish a moving picture auditorium and a stage for live productions. And on this article, I only recognized two names. And of the two names was Adolf Carthus and Thomas J. Walsh, which you could see on the old bungalow photo. He was the real estate person selling bungalows in the West End. And the other gentleman was on the Long Beach Civil Service back in the 20s. If you look at the way they set up the building and this part of this ad says the Long Beach West Amusement Corp, it looks like they bought two barracks and it looks like that they were put together. So this is an ad in the, in the uh, Daily Review, which is a Freeport newspaper back then. And you could see the plans, well, part of the plan for the Long Beach West Amusement Corp. And this is provided to me by Chuck Jacoby as well. Here's the top of the ad. And there is the way they have the, the, uh, the theater. Uh, you could see the drawing of the theater. And this again is from the Village of Freeport's newspaper back in 21. Now you see the real thing. This is actually a postcard and it's called Beach Theater, West End, Long Beach, Long Island. And this is 1921. This was very cute. I had to print this because it's saying horse enters beach theater on July 25th, 1921. So um, it seems that a horse got loose from the stables um, at the riding academy. And uh, he made his way into the theater and he was kind of like trampling all over everything. But it just is so funny because it's telling you that he entered the beach theater and this is the West Bend Theater. He was a runaway horse. Now in 1922, in the Daily Review, they also say Beach Theater Building, New York in the West End, that they had a dance. 
So it seems that it was used not only for stage, but they used it as a ballroom dancing um, school of dance, and they also had other functions there. So it was not just a theater for what we would think as a movie theater as what we do today. These are nice shots of the theater looking down Beach Street. And what I did is I turned the postcard around um, with our likes computers. And you could see at the very top of the building, it says dancing and moving pictures. Because you can't see the sign, it's reversed. So I kind of took this down from the top of the building. And here's another shot. It says Beach Theater Building. And this is on between Vermont and on Beach Street. Now this gentleman who he passed away, Bob Sagona, he wrote on Chuck Jacoby's website, his take on the West End Theater or the Nautilus as some people remember. And he said, and I'm gonna quote him because basically he packs these two paragraphs of the history of the theater. And um, he actually went to school here and he grew up here and he spent most of his life here. So he says, basically in 1930s, Sam Sonin operated the West End Theater. He and his family lived in the theater on 47 Vermont. His wife took the tickets. And during the summer months, the matinees only showed when it rained. He also had an old Nash sedan, which would go down through the West End streets ringing its bell and there was a sign on it, Matinee Today. And kids used to run to see the films. Sam had us deliver circulars for the movies of the week. And in return, you were paid with a one week's free admittance to the show. The second part of this says the Sinatar family, along with Cy Frank, took over the theater around 48, 49. Sin, Sam Sinatar owned the Lido Laundry, which was down by the Long Beach Bridge. Um, Sid and Cy redecorated the theater, they put in heat, and that old building theater was then good for the winter months. Now, this gentleman wrote a paragraph packed with information, and in his information now, I could go a little further and see about how the theater passes down from one owner to the next. On the census of 1940, I looked up the name Sonin. And I didn't know his first name, but I just took a shot. I put in Sonin, Long Beach, New York. And of course, on the 1940 census, uh, it says Long Beach. At 47 Tennessee, he said it was the other street. But I think they're back to back. 47 Tennessee, a gentleman named Ed Sonin lived. So when we go to the next slide, you'll see there's Vermont and here's Tennessee. So he lived at 47 Tennessee Avenue. I found his World War I registration card. And what do you think it says on his World War I registration card? It says Edward Sonin, where did he live? In the West End on Vermont Street, 47. And where did he work? Or place of employment or business? West End Theater, Long Beach, Nassau, New York. There's one of the playbills. There weren't too many of these around, so I was very lucky to have had um, someone post these because if without those people posting their information, you really don't have a lot. This is um, the Nautilus Theater. You could see it. It's a little blurry, but you can see the Nautilus Long Beach. And this is from July 4th, 1966. Now, I spoke to a gentleman um, because Cy Frank and Sid Sinatar owned the theater in the late 40s to the early 50s, probably maybe even early 60s. But I spoke to a gentleman, his name was Drew Knoll. And he said, my father owned the theater. And I said, well, tell me who your father is. And he says, my dad's name was Erwin Knoll. He said, Erwin Knoll bought the theater um, around 66 or so. And he said that he actually renamed the theater, the Nautilus. And the idea came from 20,000 leagues under the sea. Um, of course, and in very sad, that the theater was destroyed by fire in October of 71. And the marquee of the Nautilus you could see is falling in this picture. The fire department are battling the fire. What is very interesting and coincidental, um, the movie that's playing on the, on the bill was Woody Allen's Bananas. Now, someone had made a comment 
on the Long Beach site, which we all talk about things on Facebook, which is a, a Long Beach site specific. And it said that on the marquee, the film playing was bananas. If you go to the next slide now, you're gonna see that the Long Beach Fire Department had a cameo in that film. This was Woody Allen's second film in 1971 and the Long Beach Fire Department, this is right out of the film because I watched it. And um, I was able to take a couple of shots while the movie was going, I, I snapped a few shots. And you could see LBFD, Long Beach Fire Department, engine number four. And they had a cameo in that film. Coincidentally, that was what was playing at the theater when the fire broke out in that building. Now we're gonna go to the Castle Theater. The Castle Theater was on the boardwalk, right on National Boulevard, um, where would most people would think of is where a uh, kind of where Izzy's Kanishes would be would have been, um, but this is much earlier. This is in the twenties, um, across from this the Hotel Nassau. Um, it opened in the earlier part of the nineteen hundreds, in like nineteen fourteen or so, because it was the Castles Dance. Uh, it was Dance uh, Castles by the Sea. But at this point in twenty three, B. S. Moss builds the theater right next to, you could see the Castle's Dance Theater is on the, the smaller white building. This is a nice postcard. And next to it, you see the theater. Um, he opened this theater in about 23, and it was basically vaudevilles and photo plays. And I'm gonna go to the next slide because B.S. Moss, he owned this theater and B.F. Keith, which was his partner, um, prior to the 20s um, was the second owner of the theater. So the owner of the theaters owned this in the boardwalk and they opened in 23. Now, what's very interesting, and I didn't know this, that in 1914 or so he had passed away, but the management of the theater corporation was still Keith Albee. So you'll see Keith Albee on the um, ads and you'll see it on the top of the building but actually um, Keith had passed away. Now this is really nice because it says Al Jolson, they showed the jazz singer and this is in June and this is around 1928. So this now, this theater owning was the Keith Albee Theater at this point. Yeah, Benjamin Keith died in 1914. So his share of the company then goes into the Keith Albee Orpheum Corporation. So that was in 1928. And you could see at the top of the theater, it says Keith Albee, Castle Theater. Now around 1930, this became under, well, it was under Werber management. And what happened is they actually had to file for bankruptcy. So between 30 and the next uh, buyer of the theater, um, there is this time when they're, they're really not doing too much. So this is 1930. And in 1930, about, you know, in the earlier part, like in July, Rugoff and Becker chain takes over the theater. And so it becomes then the Herman Becker and Rugoff theater as a, as, as a company. And this is from the Brooklyn Eagle, 1930. <clears throat> Some of their performance, June Anderson, soprano, this is from the Brooklyn Eagle, July 2nd, 1933. Now, what's very interesting is now you're talking about the castle on the boardwalk, but then I found this ad, which is in the Nassau County record in 33, that Rugoff and Becker now owns the Laurel, the Lido, and the castle. So I'm like, okay, now we have to find out about the Laurel and the Lido because we know about the castle theater. So let's go a little bit down the road here. So. Rugoff and Becker, they have their playhouse at the, uh, at the castle, but as we keep moving, we're going to keep going down in 36, we're up to July 19th of 36, and of course, it, the castle theater burns down. What's very interesting, because they own now the Laurel, the Lido, and the castle, and now the castle is no longer, you can see they offer refunds for their tickets that were purchased. Good businessmen, why? Because there are two other theaters that they own in town. So if they would make good on their tickets um, to the public. So I saw this, this was really nice. Refunds for tickets purchased. 
This ad doesn't tell you the name of the theater, but it's really nice. It's a little just a help wanted that I found, but why I got it is because it says Long Beach Theater. And I wanted to know where this theater is. Now it says 75 East Park, but I think it meant 175 East Park, or they may have had an office at 75 East Park, but the, the ad is for musicians, a good piano and violin player, experience for moving pictures, Apply in evenings at 8 p.m. at the Long Beach Theater at 75 East Park, Long Beach. Now, I'm thinking, what theater could that be? This is 1925. Well, the Lido was first. So here I got Al Jolson's The Singing Fool, uh, June of 29. Now, I'm sorry about the quality of the photo, but I had to take a photograph of this off the microfilm machine because I don't have a printer at the moment. But you could see that The Singing Fool was presented at the Lido Theater. And this is early because I saw that in 25, this theater had already been built. And this is June of 29. Here's a beautiful um, bill, playbill from the Lido Theater back in 32. Um, Gloria Swanson and Jackie Cooper, Douglas Fairbanks Jr. So at this is 1932, this is beautiful. Here's a nice shot of the Lido Theater. This is looking east, and this is in the 1940s. Um, this is a photo that I got from the Historical Society. This is in 1950s. This is 1951. This is a Bob Foster. This is the Lido Theater. This is 1960. This is Dr. Kenneth Tiding's photograph. And then in 1985, it looks like this. This is from Newsday. And it's kind of sad because I love the Lido Theater. Um, I remember seeing Love Story there with my sisters. I was really little, but I do remember the theater. I remember um, in the back when you walked in, there were little curtains. And actually, if you pulled the curtain, you could actually see the, the, um, the screen. And it was a one movie screen. It was huge. It was beautiful seats and, and the beautiful carpeting. And it was just a really, it was beautiful to remember um, those days. And I was kind of little, but I do remember that. And I spoke to a woman the other day and she says, I work there. And I says, well, am I wrong about those curtains? She says, no, you could look, when you open the curtain, you could see the theater and you could watch the movie. So I was right about that. I didn't think I remembered well, but I did. Um, so they did um, go down at this point in 85, but then it came back. It became um, the Park Avenue Theater. It was still a single theater that I remember because I took my mother to see Dirty Dancing there and it was full screen. And then some a little bit down the road a piece, it became a twin. So it became a two theaters. They split it in two. So this is a picture from 1986. Mm -hmm. And then they tried to get an approval from the city to make it a seven movie plex. Um, they had battles over zoning, about parking, and of course it never uh, came about, but this was in the newspaper. This is in the Herald in 99. And uh, let's see, we did not get a seven, but we got a four. And of course that quad theater is there now. And of course, after with COVID, they just had reopened after Sandy, after many years they were uh, closed. And now again, they're still closed. So I'm hoping that they come back because I still have movie passes that I got for a gift. I'm hoping that I'll get to use them because I still love the theater. Now this movie theater, this is um, on Laurelton Boulevard, 1930. This is November 7th. So we all know which theater this is going to be, but this is already coming about in plan in 1930. In 1932, the Long Beach Theater, the new vaudeville house costing 425,000 is going to open in May. It's going to be a headlining vaudevillian acts. This is gonna be the new Laurel. And there's a nice shot of the nice Laurel Theater back in the thirties. And you see there a marquee, it's amazing. The Laurel Theater, um, the architect, he made the uh, lobby elaborate. It was with marble and red carpeting and it was air conditioned. So in 1932, this theater had air condition. 
Mayor Frankel did the dedication and it was a Rugoff Becker and Fink enterprise. And it was recognized as one of the finest playhouses on Long Island. Here's Weathering Heights being shown in 1945. This is a uh, courtesy of Dr. Kenneth Tidings. He was a wonderful photographer and our family podiatrist. The Laurel Theater, 1957. Uh, it's nice because it's daylight, so you could see the, the beautiful front. Now, this is 1976. This doesn't look as nice, of course, but it's still there. I saw Fiddler on the Roof here with my sister, Patty, and I think the last movie I saw here was Grease. Of course, it gets closed. Um, it's uh, going by the wayside. Everything is being destroyed. Um, the proposal was, again, to make and co convert this theater into a concert hall and uh, plans are turned down. This is an 81. This is another shot of the theater. It's in disarray, disrepair. This is in the 80s. The last act for the theater, it's foreclosed and it's ordered for sale. There was issues with the owners. They could not come to an agreement with the city for parking. They were not able to get a variance. So this fight, basically uh, two owners had fought with the city about parking and expanding the theater to a, a multiplex as well. And um, it just didn't happen. And it's very sad because we lost a beautiful theater. Um, I remember the balcony in the back and the stage. And I think my sister Patty had her graduation there, Long Beach High School graduation, 1962. So it was used for graduations, live shows. I remember Wonderama being there um, and great movie theater. So sad to see it go. Now, in 1946, Rugoff and Becker open a new theater on the boardwalk, and it's called the Crest. Now, the Crest Theater was in the Hotel Jackson, which is what now would be Edwards Boulevard. But back then, it was not. It was Jackson Boulevard. It was renamed Edwards Boulevard after the mayor. The Crest Theater on the boardwalk in Edwards Boulevard. So this is 46. And you could see um, Jose Ferrer. So they did live show. They had movies, summer plays. This is 47. I have a nice postcard, which it says Hotel Jackson on the boardwalk. And you see the marquee over here. I expanded the marquee so I could see what was playing. And it was playing the heiress with Miriam Hopkins. So this is 1949. Here's the crest. This is a beautiful um, printout. This is Joan Roberts. I could not, this is such a find. I mean, Joan Roberts was the first person to play on Broadway carousel. She was a soprano. She was lovely and she's a Long Beach person. Um, so she spent summers down here and she was in Lady in the Dark, 1949. I put a question mark on the 55 because the theater could have closed between 55 and 57. I don't have a definitive date, but you see the marquee here is gone and it says Hotel Jackson. Interesting enough, Edward Rugoff, who was one of the partners in the theaters, he passed away in 54. So that theater date is about correct. Um, but interesting enough, he was a resident here. And in his obituary, you find that he was director of Long Beach Hospital. He was on the board of trustee of Temple Israel. He was also um, in many, many, many charities. And yeah, he, it was like amazing. Cause like you would never know what you could find out about somebody. And how much do you would learn about somebody through their obituary? But I just keep digging. Now, why do we have a boxing ring in a mm. movie program? Well, I'm going to tell you why. There yeah. were bouts for Long Beach charity. And Jack Dempsey yeah. used to be a referee at the Long Beach Stadium. The stadium has been around since the early 20s. The heat. Electric. He, they were around since the 20s. 
And these are just three. I mean, there are many, many articles Maybe. because they go from the, the 20s all the way to the 50s. And you could it's see oil heat. You could see that we um, had boxing, wrestling. Go back after two. And then you could see, uh, courtesy of Chuck Jacoby, of course, again, on his Long Beach, New York site, there's a photograph of the stadium. It's on the right. And you could see from the um, next to the, the, the tower, which is no longer there, um, you could see the stadium. Here's beautiful um, pamphlets, Long Beach Stadium, open air ringside theater, Long Beach Boulevard and State Street. This is from August, 1940. They're doing boxing, wrestling, and then at the very top, another all-star Broadway hit next week, Sailor Beware. So they now in about 1940, are not only doing sports venues, but they have kicked into the theater. Ringside Theater for Long Beach. Long Beach Stadium located at Long Beach Boulevard and State Street is now going to be presenting summer drama every night but Friday because Friday night is fight night. The Brooklyn Eagle says that the Ringside Theater is now doing venues. So they become a theater and a presentation place of comedy and, and Broadway shows. I love this. I cannot believe that I found this. Molly Peacock, she was at the theater, margin for error. Seats, there are 2,000 seats at 55 cents a piece. And if you sat at ringside, $1.10. Long Beach Stadium, open air, ringside theater. So Molly Pecan, she played in Fiddler on the Roof. For me, that's like very, very special. She's Grandma Seidel. And she played in the Yiddish theater for many years in the city. So from, she's very famous. And she played at the Long Beach Stadium Theater. They had Nassau pop concerts, Tchaikovsky, Viennese Night, Paul Whitman, and an open air opera where they were performing Cavaliera Rusticana and Pagliacci. That is so amazing. So you come down to Long Beach, you sit in an open air stadium and you get to hear the opera. This is 1949. Now, this is one of the theaters I had no clue about. This is at Long Beach. You could go to the theater at the Masonic Theater. And I'm thinking the Masonic Theater, that's the temple. And of course it is. The Masonic Temple was built in the 20s, 26. And you'll see the, the building picture at the top and where it looks where, where it looks now, that's a current picture of the, the brick building. And it's amazing that I had no clue that it was a theater at some point. But I found, again, Long Beach, Brooklyn Eagle, 1939, the Long Beach Theater on Park and National, It Shouldn't Happen to a Dog, a new comedy by Sidney Liverman. The Long Beach Theater, Park Avenue and National Boulevard, The Moorings, this is 1939. The Masonic Theater, Long Beach, Kind Lady, Mary Bryan, Yes, My Darling Daughter. These are um, performances in the late 30s, 39 and 40. So I found out about a new theater, I had not a clue. Long Beach is popular. New facilities help draw New York vacationists to a nearby sh shore. And in this little part of this article, it says Island has two summer theaters. Here again, I had no clue. Point Lookout players at the Firehouse and Point Lookout and the Masonic Theater. So the Masonic Temple had a stage auditorium and they rebuilt it to accommodate professional performances. And this is 1940. Again, 1929, I see an ad for an Alla Fresca theater. So here I'm thinking, where is this? 1929? Hmm, that was so strange. Alla Fresca Open Theater by the Sea. So I had to scroll through the microfilm down to the very, very bottom. And it says, all seats reserved, Boardwalk and Monroe Boulevard. 
And I'm thinking, Monroe Boulevard. I didn't know there was a theater on Monroe Boulevard in the boardwalk. And I asked my brother, and he said, well, that's where Redney's was in the, in the 30s, but this is predating the 30s. This is 2930. So this is before Redney's. And you could see, this is 1930. The then Alafresco becomes the Follies Brigier, which is Theater of Long Beach, formerly the Alafresco on Monroe and the Boardwalk. And this is 1930, so already changed hands. And it's uh, an open theater, open air theater. This um, ad says that June 28th, hold your hats, 1930, Jack Linder and Mae West were their attraction. So the Theater Guild is our local theater uh, productions and they have almost 50 years as a part of Long Beach. And it was in the newspaper. The Herald talks about them being here almost 50 years. I found this in the New York Times. It's Oklahoma, December of 1976. This is Anything Goes, Cole Porter, uh, January of 1978, and Gypsy, 1979. I have to say that it's been so real to be able to um, think about the movies and how they kind of, even through our history, La Laurel closed and is now CBS. And of course, um, the Lido Theater is still closed because uh, when COVID happened, everything was shut down and they have not opened again. And that's not the only theater that has happened to. It's across the island and in the city as well. A lot of places are closed. Um, very few are reopening. And, and if it's opening, they're opening very slowly. Um, this was actually uh, an article in Newsday of October of this year, um, talking about the anxiety of reopening with um, the battle against COVID. So I will say that it's not just from COVID, it was historically um, an issue with theaters going under, um, you know, having to deal with not having enough money or support from the, the, the city, say, when they wanted to make a multiplex at the Laurel. And then many years later, they gave the variance for the, not a seven, but they made it a four, which is the current theater now with the parking lot in the back, which used to be Jack in the Box. Um, they, they destroyed a theater and it became CBS. Um, they lost a very beautiful part of our, our, our culture.